Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm not Kashyap Devra. I am Gaurav Tishbandi. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Hypertrack. And I'm so happy that all of you are joining us here. It's an honor and a privilege that you take time out of your busy schedules to join us, join us here for the first inaugural Logistics and Tech Summit. I can't tell you, I when I got on board uh, with Hypertrack three months back, four months back, you know, Kashyap had been telling me, this is something that people have been asking for. And you know, here it is. I give you Kashyap Devra, uh, CEO of Hypertrack. Uh, just a quick uh, housekeeping announcement before Kashyap starts his presentation. Um, those of you uh, who are on uh, on the feed loop uh, portal, uh, listening to us, um, you will see join by join audio by computer. Um, that's how you are able to hear me. Um, on the bottom left hand side, there's a join audio button. So anytime you want to switch the audio or join back in, remember that bottom left hand side join audio button. Click on that and they say join audio by computer, and you'll be able to hear what we are talking about. Uh, second housekeeping item is in the feed loop chat. Um, you can post any questions that you have uh, during the session, or as we have the round table in the second half of the session, you can post the questions there. Any problems you have, you can also post it in the chat there. And one of the team members from Logistics Tech Summit and the logistic community would be able to help you. Uh, with that, um, let me allow, it's my honor and pleasure to announce Kashyap Devra, founder and CEO of Hypertrack. Kashyap, take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, welcome to Logistics Tech Summit. Um, welcome to the first Logistics Tech Summit. Welcome to your first Logistics Tech Summit. So you've been asking for it for, for many years now. It's been six years since we started Hypertrack and brought the logistics tech community together. I'm just, I'm super thrilled and excited to, to have our first, you know, our the, the first of uh, the logistics tech builder community um, of the world. And it feels like uh, the revenge of the nerds, if you will. Um, let me, let me explain that. So, um, you know, we all know nerds uh, run the Silicon Valley. I don't have to call out that nerds are cool anymore. Um, but logistics actually has been different. You know, logistics has always, always been seen as the back end of things. All the investment and mind share goes into bringing in new business, customer acquisition. So ad tech, marketing tech are a much larger proportion of e-commerce than logistics tech is of e-commerce or logistics tech is of all of logistics. It's long in the tooth, you know, it's stuck in the dinosaur age. And the reason for that is, you know, one of my former employers, uh, a major retailer, he used to say, retail is about product and price. Technology and logistics are just enablers, you know, as long as they don't screw up, he used to say. So that retailer is, is incidentally now a dinosaur hit by an asteroid called e-commerce, but I think the state of logistics tech in the world by far is still a reflection of somewhat of that sentiment. So the world has changed. You know, the world has changed dramatically now, as we know, the world we live in. Um, just look at the on-demand economy. You know, is it about the product or price, really, right? Is it uh, people getting a better cab or a better dish from the restaurant or some exclusive groceries? Um, is it about, you know, so it's, it's not a different product. Um, it's not cheaper price either, right? We, we don't order online because it's cheaper anymore uh, or on demand because it's cheaper. In most cases, we're paying more and we know we're paying more. So convenience has really emerged as the number one value proposition for customers. You know, So between product price and convenience, convenience has sort of taken over as number one uh, for, for the last many years now. So fulfillment... In, in some sense has become the, uh, the front end, you know, from, from being the back end. Um, so we logistics uh, nerds have, have our revenge. And just right before I started, you know, uh, one of the panelists, Tom, um, 
you know, Swigert um, uh, from iFit, uh, you know, parent company Nordic Track, they make exercise equipment. He was, he was saying that although logistics is coming more into focus, the technology behind logistics is still underrepresented. So I'm just super thrilled to have, um, you know, to be kicking off our first uh, logistics tech summit. So let me ask you a question and I'll give, I'll give you a few seconds before I switch to the next slide. Do you know which are the largest muscles in the human body? Give it a second. So, you know, many of you might actually know this, but I got to know this much later. You know, I, I got to know this during COVID just a few years ago when I started training and exercising indoors. So, you know, in my late teens, when I first went to the gym, I wanted to build bulky biceps, you know, handsome chest, six pack abs. And that tells you I'm, I'm dating myself. It tells you how old I am because Gen Z would say eight pack, you know, what's a six pack dad? Um, but, you know, uh, it was all about the front end, the attractive front end for customer acquisition, if you know what I mean. Um, but to my surprise, the, the more important muscles are um, all in the back. So it's the back of the thigh, glutes, um, hips, you know, the back, triceps. Uh, so the true core of the human body is in the back. And the health of the body, the lifespan, strength, they all come from, uh, from the back end. And when times get tough, as they did for many of us personally during COVID, uh, health-wise, and from a business perspective, times are getting tough now with high inflation and interest rates uh, uh, and market conditions and e-commerce consolidation, you name it, potentially an upcoming recession. We are all going back to the basics, right? So we are strengthening the most important muscles of our body, logistics, you know. Um, and that will that that's what will lead to efficient growth and profitable growth. So here's what I'm saying. You know, you don't want to be Popeye, uh, the sailor man, solving all the world's problems with the bicep of one hand, right? Uh, while the other hand is uh, used to to eat spinach and grow those biceps. You want to be more like Sue Storm, the invisible woman. Uh, she never appears solo, by the way. Her powers are passive. They're meant to protect, not attack. She was one of the original characters in Fantastic Four when Marvel started doing superheroes. Um, and just like logistics tech, I feel like we need to evolve that character. There's just a lot more potential there and um, it's powerful, reliable. We often repeat at Hypertrack, you know, every time a bunch of us get together and review our values, we talk about how we don't want to win the best actor award. You know, that's for our customers. We consistently want to win the best supporting actor award, right? And I feel like this represents the sentiment of the logistics tech builder community that I'm talking to today. So let me dive a little deeper into how we see the evolution of logistics tech so far. You know, so it feels like we're in the third generation of logistics tech, right? So in the first generation, you had a few software companies that are building vertical end-to-end -end solutions and applications, transportation management system, TMS, you know, field service management system, you know, FSM, fleet management solutions, and so on. So you buy all these apps in a box, you open the box, you roll out a control tower to the ops manager, um, you know, apps for the driver or fit a GPS into the vehicle. You pass along a link to to the customer, um, and boom, you know that's that's logistics tech. In the second generation, which I would date in the mid two thousands to late two thousands, a few things happened. You know, the mobile OS became Android and iOS predominantly, and they allowed you to make apps and distribute them. And the apps had access to device location and other sensor information with user permission. <clears throat> You had cloud technologies, so AWS became a thing, changed the world. Other hyperscalers built sophisticated cloud infrastructure um, technologies that became accessible to developers. And then maps companies, the digital maps companies, um, started offering logistics-friendly solutions. So as developers, we could take all of these pieces and stitch up logistics tech. And think of this as the early days of Uber, Instacart, DoorDash, even Amazon, 
that that did all this with billions of dollars of investments and you know lots of, you know hundreds of engineers um, over the years building out some really defensible logistics tech which is giving them a significant advantage into um, owning a huge part of the consumption and 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 retail so we are in the third generation now and you know it's time to start building with better and smarter apis you know it's um logistics is a large enough space and we are a large enough community that we need our own api that special purpose we need our own cloud so there's a million of us apparently if you look at 30 million developers in the world a million of those are logistics tech builders um, who are building logistics apps so these are apps for workers you know for the drivers who are the real people making it happen on the ground apps that make their lives better more productive and ultimately generating more income for them apps for the operations managers you know those supervisors who sit in stores and warehouses and regional offices hubs lines of businesses customer support centers you name it it's a thankless job by the way no one remembers you when things go bad uh, i'm sorry no one remembers you when things go right we all remember you when um, things go bad right and um, and yet we all count on them for um, for making it happen on time uh, all the time so yeah, and finally apps for customers so so that the customers know at every important moment what's happening to their order you know blow by blow turn by turn barcode in barcode out is not good anymore you know it's um, saying that the order is on the way check is in the mail is is it doesn't work anymore customers are anxious their expectation is to have much higher visibility into every turn of the order so hypertrack's role in in this journey is to provide these special purpose apis so that these million developers can build their logistics tech their own way and fulfill their imagination right so do it in a way that gives you control over your workflows and user experiences um, for for all all of these stakeholders you know the driver the ops manager and the customer and these are apis to to plan assign and track orders for uh, last mile fulfillment so that you do not have to stitch up mobile cloud and maps infrastructure and can focus on your core business and you know what we believe is why should this technology be within the walled gardens of a few on demand apps who who you know retain a sort of monopoly on on this technology this is a technology that we want to build and democratize uh, for the rest of the world for for logistics tech builders uh, such as yourself. So imagine what took the on-demand apps a few years and billions of dollars and many engineers to build. What if you could build stuff like that within two sprints with a couple of engineers, right? And when you take something that's previously difficult and make that really easy and hand over that power into the hands of uh, developers and creators and builders like yourselves, then that's when magic happens, right? So that's that's what we're rooting for. So we collectively have have a job to do, you know. So logistics tech is um, long in the tooth, stuck in the stone age. We need to get it out of there to um, to a much better place. So, you know, one of the blogs uh, uh, and and many other industry reports have cited that. Logistics tech is going from a $25 billion market to a $100 billion market. We're starting with a million developers and uh, we'll need many more of those, but we get to set the stage and the foundation for how we get from 25 to 100. So if you think about that for a second, three times more logistics tech will get built in the next decade than has been built in the past four decades, right? And you know that's that's a huge responsibility and whenever we think about building what we're building and why we are doing so i think what shows up on the surface is we're doing it for better customer experiences and for better efficiencies for for the business of course now while those are true let me add a couple of more things which um, are 
very relevant uh, to, to what we're impacting in the world. Worker income and carbon emissions, right? So let me go one by one. So in the, in, in the world at large, the labor market is, is reorganizing itself in a dramatic way. Uh, Gen Z doesn't want full-time jobs or job security as much as they want flexibility and working on their own terms and using their skill to, to maximize income, uh, flex work, you know, the great resignation is happening. Um, so our work in logistics tech is going to contribute to the primary income of an increasing number of people in the world. And this is a trend spanning industries, spanning geographical regions. And on, on the other side, um, the shortest path logistics, more efficient logistics is going to lead to lower carbon emissions. You know, uh, vehicles will get more electric and yet, you know, the vehicles need to be charged. Um, the more efficiently we orchestrate, you know, plan, assign and track what's going on, um, we'll, we'll influence, we'll directly influence a better, greener planet. So just, you know, keep that in the back of your minds. Um, so, you know, I, I just want to share some exciting numbers with you. Uh, it's very heartwarming for us at HyperTrack uh, when, you know, we've been at it for six years with the mission of bringing logistics tech builders of the world together and democratizing these special purpose APIs for them to build out uh, the last mile. Um, about 2% of these million developers have signed up for HyperTrack and, and played around with uh, our APIs. 1,500 of you have registered for this summit. It's an overwhelming response, a very warm response. It, it, it tells me that we've hit a nerve with how important it is for us logistics tech community to get together and uh, share learnings and, um, uh, and really build out the future together. We represent over 300 companies, Gaurav tells me, um, over 80 countries, all inhabited continents and most time zones, um, and you know many dozens of industries. Um, many of you are live right now, and um, many will be later in the day, um, and others are going to view the recorded sessions that um, in their own time and their own time zones. So talking to all of you is how we, uh, you know, how we know how much you waited for this moment. So who are we, right? Who, what industries do we represent? What companies do we represent? Let me give you a little sneak peek into that um, before moving on to our uh, next session. So, you know, when I say logistics tech builders, here's what we represent. Um, so of course we have the supply chain and log logistics, uh, you know, delivery people, trucking, couriers, movers, uh, the package people, you name it. We have manufacturers and retailers uh, who are now delivering same day or even on demand. Um, I think the manufacturers and retailers realize that they they want to be, you know. They do not want to become dinosaurs and uh, are aware of the incoming asteroid uh, called the on-demand economy. Um, and uh, you know they're they've started to build their own gig delivery networks. They've um, started to have uh, tighter control over the technology integration uh, and owning the end customer experience and brand experience with their three PLs. We also have uh, flex work marketplaces. Um, I've been talking about the labor market reorganizing across industries, you know, not just uh, drivers and uh, food delivery and grocery delivery, but across the board, the labor market is getting reorganized. So there are flex work marketplaces that are helping uh, the market reorganize across industries. So they're represented in the show. Um, and then we have mobility companies in many ways. They're the ones who showed us the way on how on-demand commerce for the world will work for the next few decades. Um, and, you know, it started with more, uh, you know, ride sharing. And now um, that same technology is going into intercity, intracity, public transit, uh, private transit, um, you name it. We also have, you know, you see some big logos here. 
in terms of large enterprises. And the reason for that is, um, you know, they have large field service and field sales forces. Um, they're dealing with um, the flex work phenomenon as well as their customers, be it a business or end consumer, um, seeking, you know, uh, more uh, on demand or same day kind of experiences. Um, so they're in the show as well. And if I take a step back and try and summarize, so what is the logistics tech community, right? How would you simply define that? I would say one way to look at that is it's the people who are building tech for anything that moves with commercial value. So if you look out and go, if there is movement, whether in a bike or truck or van or a car, if it's movement with commercial value where a product or service or ride has, has an order associated with it, the tech to plan and assign and track that is, is uh, logistics tech. So all of you are here today. Thank you very much for, for being here and, and, and starting this first uh, summit. So let me dive into, into the good stuff now. Um, we have a fantastic lineup of speakers today. Right after my introduction here, we'll get, get on a round, round table uh, for the on-demand and last mile uh, delivery. Uh, veteran journalist, uh, Chris Primusberger, one of my favorite people, he's been writing about tech since the beginning of the internet, of the public internet in the 90s. Um, he's going to be moderating a panel talking with um, Aaron Marcus from Kroger, who's going to bring in the supermarket perspective, uh, also as an engineering leader, the engineering perspective. Tom Swigert, um, who I spoke about um, a few moments ago, um, he's he's going to bring in the operations perspective and, you know, from, uh, you know, big and bulky, uh, you know, treadmills um, and so on. Um, Vishal Kapoor from Shipt, uh, he's, he represents, uh, you know, a leading same day delivery service of the nation, uh, Target being the parent company. He also represents the product clan uh, on the panel. And then after that, Chris continues on to uh, have a conversation with uh, Kaushik Pindurthi from Jobbox and Connor Leons from Gigable, all the way from Ireland. Chris uh, is going to talk to them about the tectonic shift in the labor market that I've been alluding to, a phenomenon that no industry can ignore anymore. And you know, you'll see in that talk, it's it's uh, uh, it's super exciting. Um, and then the, the last exec roundtable of the day would be on field services um, and field sales. Haridat from W Energy is going to be on the panel. W Energy is, of course, uh, the ERP leading ERP provider for oil and gas companies in the US. Uh, he's joined by Partha Sarkar from Groundworks, America's leading provider of foundation services, and Agni Ananda from Appify. Um, you know, Appify is a third gen technology helping builders build out you know, field service, field sales management. And they have some of the largest companies in media, telecom and utility sectors. Um, so he's gonna talk about that and they will collectively talk about the challenges in uh, field service reliability and productivity and how technologies are being deployed to solve it. And then we have um, in between these exec round tables, we would be announcing some case studies. Uh, these are hypertrack users who've, who've built with our APIs and um, made a significant dent in their business um, using that technology. They're going to be presenting their case studies um, during the show. Um, and then at the end of that, the case studies will be available to you to take offline, um, you know, both the videos of the talk as well as um, um, documents that you can uh, share with your colleagues and uh, take home. So let me give you a quick intro there. Peter and Viviana from Jobbox will talk in depth about flex work in the home services space and specifically how they improved job completion rates, uh, their North Star metric. Um, and then Srivan from W Energy talks about field service in the oil and gas industry and how they improve productivity for field service professionals. Um, in that industry. And finally, Prashant from Magaloop in Germany 
is going to be talking about same day and next day B2B delivery. These are deliveries going from wholesalers and manufacturers to mom and pop retailers in Germany and how they improved user retention with better planning, assignment, and tracking. All of these case studies, like I said, will have accompanying material that will be published on logisticstechsummit.com with public access. Uh, read it, share it with your teams. Uh, ask us or the speakers for any clarifications or questions. And now this, this part is super exciting. You know, I've been talking about the three generations of uh, logistics tech. Um, and that can be very confusing for, for us when we make our decisions about what to buy or what to build with. So Hypertrack has spent a lot of time to put together a buyer's guide for you to, to help you navigate this complex uh, landscape. Um, so there's apps and SDKs and APIs and open source software, map solutions, cloud solutions, route optimizers, each evolving in their own way and getting more adjacent with the other as well, which is all great for, for the industry. It can be very confusing uh, so we've tried to synthesize it, provided some mental models, tables, charts um, for developers and product managers to, to make the right decisions about what's the right fit for their context. And also given a commercial perspective there so that business executives and CFOs um, can weigh in with uh, the commercial implications of that and your business as a whole can make the right uh, decision. So that releases today. Um, you'll find the buyer's guide button next to the registration button on logisticstechsummit.com. Uh, go check it out uh, today. It should be online, um, and if not, in the next uh, few hours. Um, so different ways of building versus buying, last mile tech, investing in software versus hardware versus services versus ongoing maintenance, trade-offs between out-of-the-box functionality, flexibility, time to market, risk initial investment, ongoing cost of ownership, um, and doing all this in a way that ensures unit economics um, you know, are predictable and um, as we iterate across uh, these different pieces of technology. Um, in the first uh, avatar of uh, Logistics Tech Summit, we decided to keep it virtual. One, to be more inclusive, uh, of of uh, you know this diverse community, um, and 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 the other was to just understand the pulse of where people were, who would participate, and how many would even show up. And we've just been so overwhelmed with the response uh, this time that you know it, it just bodes really well for the future of this uh, summit. Um, so although everything's virtual today and tomorrow. We do have uh, in-person meetups uh, and connects uh, that we are um, that we're going to do over the course of the year. To start with, we're announcing um, four regions where we will do small um, executive roundtables. Uh, it's by nomination only. The nominations would open this Friday, uh, November eighteenth, on logisticstechsummit.com. Uh, seats are limited, so please be sure to go there and uh, you know uh, and file your nominations. Um, we'll start with Chicago, followed by Dallas Fort Worth area, followed by Home Sweet Home, San Francisco Bay area, and then uh, Bangalore. So all this is between now and uh, January. And if your city is missing or you want to request a city for a meetup, please uh, you know there'll be a provision to do that on logisticstechsummit.com. Um, so want to announce that. And then finally, you know, there is tomorrow. So let me just give you a quick sneak peek into tomorrow. Um, Ram, the head of product of Hypertrack, will start the day tomorrow by walking us through the Hypertrack product vision and roadmap. Um, we have some exciting new features and releases that we've been baking for uh, the better part of the year. So I'm super excited about that. I started my morning today with um, seeing some of those go to production, um, you know, right before the event. Um, we are releasing order scores. Um, imagine every order that's fulfilled 
is automatically scored across a dozen contributing metrics and, and, and you have a quality score of the order fulfillment, uh, the right place, right time, the right amount of time, the most efficient routes, trackability, et cetera. Um, then we have orders at risk that we recently released. Uh, Ram will talk about that. Orders which are still on the way. How can you assess the real-time risk of, um, of something bad happening and, and intervening and addressing that proactively? Um, we're, we're launching places, um, also called address book, where we use your drivers as sort of cartographers. They don't have to do anything different from what they're doing today. But we're using the places they're visiting to draw up the logistics map of your business and help you use that in significant ways. And all of these are sort of building blocks to what we call self-improving routes, where every order fulfilled helps you make the next order fulfillment better. Um, we all have a plan. Um, and as Mike Tyson says, uh, you know, we all have a plan until we get punched in the face. And that's the life in logistics um, is when reality hits, how do you use the deviation between plan and actual to, to make a better plan for the next one, right? So that's self-improving routes. Um, so exciting stuff coming up. Uh, right after that, Muiz is going to run a workshop um, where we help you build your own logistics app uh, with HyperTrack and your favorite map, you know, Google or Mapbox. Um, we will validate your app at the end and give you a certificate uh, at the end of the workshop. Um, and then HyperTrack's solution leaders and engineering leaders take over and take you into some deep dives. The two Bens of HyperTrack, Ben Allen and Ben Johnson, will talk to our customers, Eric Geiler from NB Courier in Canada and Toby Becker from Magaloop in Germany. Um, they'll talk to them about uh, key operational considerations when deploying logistics tech, uh, just practical stuff uh, and issues when uh, rubber hits the road, uh, followed by our head of logistics intelligence, uh, talking about our ML AI analytics layer. And finally, you know, very excited about uh, Hypertrax founding engineers, you know, the foundational engineers who are building the very foundation of Hypertrax infrastructure that, that you lean on. Uh, they're going to be, you know, giving you a sneak peek under the hood um, around our device to cloud infrastructure uh, and, and talking about scale, security, reliability, and all of that good stuff. So um, that was a mouthful. Um, I am super excited and just a warm, heartfelt welcome to everyone. Thank you for making this day possible. Excited about the next few hours. So pour your coffee uh, or your favorite beverage, depending on what time zone you are in. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, to Chris uh, Primesberger to, to take us into prime time. I'm excited about our future together, and uh, let's build it together. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Keshav, very much for that important high-level perspective of both the sector and of today's event. Um, and thank you all for joining our best practices and last mile logistics discussion at the first ever Logistics and Tech Summit. Guys like me who are journalists uh, love first only and new. And this is first, it's only, and it's new. So I love it. Uh, I'm a journalist with both uh, ZDNet and uh, VentureBeat based in Silicon Valley. I'll be pitching the questions today for our distinguished subject matter experts. This is all about the API technology behind theory becoming reality in the supply chain. So that's what this is about. Gentlemen, we have a mere 20 minutes. Let's put them all to good use. Um, we have Aaron Marcus from Kroger, Tom Schweigert from uh, IFIT, and Vishal Kapoor from Shipt. And uh, you've been introduced. Let's go right into the questions here. Team Hypertrack was at Home Delivery World recently. The trade show focused on consumer deliveries. Other logistics events were happening there also. Conspicuous by their absence were Amazon and the major on-demand apps like Uber, DoorDash, Instacart, et cetera. 
They were the early movers in the on-demand and gig workforce, yet they seem to hold their tech close to their chests. Are they the competitors for you? Vishal, you want to start off? Sure, Chris. Uh, it's great to be here. I just wanted to start by saying thanks to Kashyap, Gaurav, and the entire HyperTrack team for organizing. This is a fantastic summit, and I wish you the best as, as, as it goes on. Uh, so back to the question, Chris. Uh, I, uh, before working at SHIP, before, before coming here, I was at a company called Lyft, which is another rideshare provider, which is in the North America. It is a big competitor to Uber. It is, it is considered as the second uh, biggest rideshare provider compared to Uber. So having worked firsthand into being, being, in, being on the inside of these companies, I absolutely think that these are a threat. Uh, you know, using Kashyap's analogy, you know, the dinosaurs and then, you know, the new entrants, which are, which are here. Uh, I think the biggest advantage that's the, that these companies have is exactly as Kashyap was mentioning in the, in, the, in the opening introduction is that they have been around for many years and now they have that comparative advantage of, of, of data and having that moat of data. They have built a lot of in-house technology, which is extremely specialized to be able to run these type of you know last mile delivery these type of logistics functions a simple example is you know uber for example has its own version of maps implemented right so they used to use google maps and and you know a few years ago they decided to bring the maps in house it is absolutely a non trivial exercise for any company even with billions of dollars of funding to get that kind of mapping and routing right with you know down to gps accuracy and things like that so they are starting here and the segments that they are mostly focused on, they are actually going after the medium to the small, you know, the long tail of providers. And they are actually starting with things like, you know, restaurant deliveries, Uber Eats, or DoorDash does, you know, deliveries, drive, et cetera. And now they are starting to move into more and more generalized delivery segments. Shipped, for example, is a company that started with a use case of shopping and delivering. So, you know, you shop and deliver orders. Uh, so somebody, a customer can place an order for, a grocery delivery where you know you may have kids for example and you don't have time or you don't want to spend time uh, in going and doing chores for example so you could come go to the ship tap and uh, and request a grocery delivery uh, so there is absolutely that the, the technology that is inside i you know speaking first hand mapping is one technology extremely difficult to for any company to build uh, which is the reason why you know probably a handful of companies in the world got it right to begin with right uh, think about things like dispatch when you're trying to match a order with with somebody on the especially trying to do this on a on-demand economy and and on top of that especially trying to do this on a flexible workforce where the workforce is not constant and it's an elastic workforce you're constantly trying to figure out you know an incoming unit of demand how do you map it to uh, an available but maybe not an active unit of supply how do you activate supply how do you manage supply you know when coming into this scenario so so there is things like dispatch. There's things like surge pricing. For example, Uber Uber brought that into the forefront. There are many many complex technologies like this, which these companies are now kind of getting into, and you know, sort of like getting into the industry like that. So it's absolutely a threat. Tom, what's your perspective? It wouldn't start right if I wasn't on mute. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Cash Up and Gaurav and HyperTrack for giving me this opportunity. Uh, coming from a big and bulky perspective, is Amazon and their technologies a competitor? Unfortunately, yes, and a partner. So it's it's a um, it's a divided uh, love hate relationship. So Amazon is a trusted partner of ours, a fantastic retailer uh, that sells our high end treadmills, ellipticals, and whatnot. At the same time. I lose sales on direct to customer because of Amazon. So we get to speed to consumer, we get the visibility, we get the tracking, all of what Kapoor is talking about that Amazon is a specialist at. And so when a, a delivery goes more than two, three days over the ETA, the first thing a customer says to me, well, let me cancel my order. I can buy it quicker on Amazon. So absolutely, Amazon and their technology is a competitor, but also a, a valued partner at the same time. So. Very good. You got to walk that that thin line, don't you? Absolutely, Aaron, every day. Yeah, Aaron, do you have a take on that? Let, let's move on because this is uh, related to 
the expertise of the other people on the panel. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. E-commerce deliveries grew spectacularly after the pandemic started in March 2020. Although this year we saw a consolidation in demand and an overall, overall market correction. On the other hand, there's a growing pool of gig workers, along with uh, growing retail and retailer investments in gig delivery platforms. From your perspective, is there an imbalance now and in the next year between consumer demand and workforce supply in the last mile space? Tom, you want to take that? <laughs> Thank you again for the prompts. Uh, yes, there is. So in the big and bulky, we just don't have enough local delivery companies to be able to handle uh, the volume that's being pushed there. So here at IFET, parent company of Nordic Track and Proform, you know, we're fighting with home goods, we're fighting with Best Buy, we're fighting with Home Depot uh, just to get capacity for teams to deliver our freight. Um, and then you add the added expertise of an assembly, uh, which so you're not just dealing with uh, just average delivery drivers anymore. Now you're asking delivery drivers to have a technical aptitude and not just a technical aptitude, but the soft skills needed to speak to my customers. So you buy a treadmill from me, you never see anyone at iFit, you never see anyone at Nordic Track. Uh, you may have to deal with our customer service, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the delivery companies that fully represent us. So how are those delivery companies uh, presented? Uh, what are they wearing? What do they say to our customers? And unfortunately, there's just not enough individuals currently in the delivery industry to, to adequately service every zip code in the United States. And that, that's where we are, unfortunately. You add that with AB5 in California and the potential of the um, White House rolling that out kind of an, on a national basis. And then all of a sudden you're losing your independent contractors, which in the home delivery space is who we really rely on. We're not relying on asset drivers. We're relying on those independent contractors growing their families, growing their businesses. And the hit that it's taken to them has just been catastrophic. Yeah, uh, Vishal, you got a point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, do work on the shopper side at Ship, which is the, the gig side or the supply side at Ship. And there is absolutely a, a crunch for finding uh, good quality, good gig quality workers who will be loyal to your platform. For one, for one thing, uh, a lot of these platforms are now very commoditized. It is easy for these workers to multi-home is, is what we call it. You know, work at an Uber, uh, drive for Uber versus, you know, shop for Instacart, simultaneously shop for Shipt. Wherever they are getting the demand, they will be online in all these apps. So that is absolutely happening. Uh, and the other, you know, the one-two punch on this is that inflation, unfortunately, is an all-time high. So uh, the, when the demand side is kind of feeling it, right, the customers are feeling it, the supply side or the shoppers or the drivers are feeling it as well. So you have to sort of figure out a way to manage your unit economics without, uh, you know, overcharging the demand, but you want to make sure that you are paying your, paying your customers, uh, paying your supply side, the drivers and shoppers enough so that they are attractive to come and work for your platform. As Tom mentioned, you know, regulations like AB5, et cetera, also make it complicated. And in, in, this is a hyper look, these are hyper localized businesses generally, and it makes it complicated to operate in certain geos and markets as well. So that is true that there is a supply crunch in the industry in general. It's very difficult to retain, to, to acquire and retain supply, generally speaking. Pricing is a lever, obviously. But the other side, I want to also cover that uh, the industry is strong. The, the numbers that we look at when we when we look at, you know, where is the industry going? It, even only for the for the delivery space, for example, on-demand delivery space, that is ex expected to grow about thirteen to fourteen percent year over year. So you know, double-digit growth is not is not insignificant given where the industry already is. So one part is strong, the other part, you know, I think especially as we come out of the pandemic and you know things are starting to settle down with economy, etc., it will take some time for us to settle down. Yeah. Very good, Aaron. Yeah, so on this one, I can definitely talk about the demand of the of the picture, not the supply, because uh, that's where we have partners like Shift and Instacart and others whom we are working with. But when I talk of demand, I, I see that there is going to be an organic growth as we move forward. I understand there was a COVID, you know, uptick and now there's a correction. But 
as we move forward, we see there's a growing trend of Gen Z that will be the family unit 10 years from now. And the current family unit will have another set of demands. So the convenience offerings that the Gen Z clientele is using at this point will move in that space of families using those convenience offerings. So there is going to be an organic shift in demand. And supply also is motivated with what Kashyap said, where Gen Z wants flexibility. So they will go for gig, gig work in the future. So it's kind of going to meet at a point, but in the near future, yes, there is an imbalance. I agree. Very good. We've got about eight minutes left, so let's make good use of those minutes. Instant commerce is in the news as a trend with new upstarts promising 20 minute deliveries for certain products. How do you see this affecting the last mile delivery? Are there unreasonable expectations, Tom? Absolutely. So that, that's kind of the, the issue, right? I, I'm big and bulky. I can't deliver a 500 pound treadmill in 20 minutes. Unfortunately, <laughs> Amazon has made it to where that's what customers expect. So, and, and I'm guilty of it too. When, when we had our pre-talk, I told you the story, you know, it's, we're not an Amazon effect family. We're a Pizza Hut effect family. So we order a pizza from Pizza Hut. It's 20 minutes away. Uh, my kids are on their phone tracking it as if it's an Olympic sport. So let alone if you drop $5,000 on a treadmill, you know, that's shipping out of Logan, Utah, out to Romulus, Michigan. So it, it's one of those uh, expectations. Uh, and that goes right back to the Amazon question, which was, which was number one, which is what effect does that have? Customers now expect their treadmills in five days. So my KPIs now to my carriers are five days from on dock. And I will tell you the Wismo questions that my customers call in with every day past that five days is intolerable. The, the cost just to deal with Wismo's questions, it, it, I mean, it has to be fixed. And one of the ways to fix that is proper tech. And as a sourcing manager for iFit, I'm continuously looking for those opportunities to provide that data to my customers so they don't need to call. They have it in their fingertips. Aaron, can you offer some engineering perspective on this? Oh, definitely. So I look at this problem from an engineering enablement to a business. And I think the biggest thing a business should look at is not what's happening around, but what is your own problem statement? Identifying that problem statement for, like, for instance, we do sushi delivery. That's a very different modality compared to like delivering what treadmills would take, right? So your business need needs to be identified. You need to find your thin slice of a solution because e-commerce is a vast space. It's not one size fits all. So each business should focus on identifying their problem and finding the solution based on that becomes much easier and more impactful from engineering standpoint. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Very good. Vishal, what's your take? Yeah, I would quickly add that uh, building upon what Tom and Aaron just said, uh, you absolutely have to identify what is the what are the business use cases you're supporting for your customer. I'll just leave it at a high level that it is easier to get a ride when the ride is a, it's sort of a homogenous, uh, you know, unit of uh, unit of work that you're doing. You know, you can get an SUV, you can get a sedan, you can get a, you know, a large car, you can get whatever you want, but it's just ordering a ride. And that you can, you can build the logistics to get that down to a few minutes, but expecting that to get milk, to get eggs, to get a treadmill, to get, you know, to get this, to get a spin bike, like all of that <laughs> within 15 minutes is probably unreasonable because, Building that kind of loss, last mile logistics at a, at a, in a situation where you can operate profitably with with good supply, meeting customer expectations all the time is a very challenging problem. So very yes, good. depending on what you where you are, what use case you have, uh, you need to focus on you know whether you whether you should set those customer expectations or not. Very good. Got about four minutes left. The time flies by, doesn't it? Which is the most underrated technology advancement that you were rooting for in 2023? Where would you like to see the most progress this year? Tom, uh, something about observability tools. What do you think? That's exactly, where, that's exactly where I was going here, Chris, is, is that visibility right now is, it, I'm, I'm looking for it. I, you know, I've gone through, had demos with a dozen different companies, and each of them is lacking something. Um, so it, it, I, I believe that we need to focus more from a tech standpoint on a customer experience and what that customer experience is. At the end of the day, no matter what kind of back we build for our industry, 
if we don't have that customer and we don't have that five-star NPS rating from that customer, it doesn't matter what the backbone is that actually got the, the, the merchandise to that member. So I think there needs to be a sharp, sharp focus on how the member, how the customer experience ultimately is going to end up. Yeah, the customer has to like and trust the retailer, don't they? Correct. Aaron, what's your take on this about visual clarity for all aspects? I totally think that last mile space in this specific aspect has a lot of uh, growth still left, a lot of maturity left. I believe we need something like digital twins that we have in other sectors, which are very detailed, like from end to end of where the product starts to where it is and when it's reaching the customer at scale. Those are the text uh, tech stacks that I would really root for because I think that brings a lot of power to your business stakeholders, to your engineering, and also to your operations, specifically people on the ground who are struggling every day to figure out, okay, where is where is this product in this whole chaos of 300 orders I'm tracking at this point, right? So that's where I think uh, the focus will be going down because I think it's, it's a need, yeah. Good, Vishal? Yeah, I think I'll take, a, I'll steal a line uh, from Aaron uh, from, a, from an earlier conversation. Uh, the amount of operational visibility and excellence that you have in operating something like, for example, an oil rig, or you know, let's say you were trying to land a rover on the rover on the moon, for example, a rover on Mars. The amount of visibility that you have, that is the sort of the visibility and transparency into where your logistic logistics are, which a customer is now starting to expect in a, in your app, in you know, in on your phone, in your app, that level of visibility. So yes, absolutely, because of customer expectations, because the Amazons have kind of pushed the push the envelope to that end. Now everybody sort of expected to catch up and you know bring the industry along, but that is where the next line of innovation is definitely going to happen. Thank you for that. We got one minute left. Let's see if we can write a headline each of us on this one. Uh, journalist, that's what I have to do every day. So okay, it's not that hard. We've got over a 1,500 logistics team tech builders and um, and executives joining us here at the Logistics and Tech Summit today. The bulk of them are working on last mile delivery. What's your advice for them regarding processes and tools or technology needed to optimize the last mile delivery? You got to really cut this down. Tom, go for it. Yeah, transparency and your relationship with your carriers. That's, that's it's my, it's my mantra. Uh, the customer experience, pricing, all of it comes down to your relationship with your carrier and your transparency with your carrier. That's, that's my, th those are my final words there, Chris. Very good, A plus. Okay, Aaron, what's yours? I would, again, take the engineering context. For solutions that we are building, I would go with the think again strategies laid out by Adam, Adam Grant. It's so young right now, this whole industry, that we need to constantly question what we built and keep on iterating because your problem is evolving. Your landscape is evolving. So that's what I would say. If you are in this industry, you need to keep on questioning what you just did yesterday. That's how we Very would good. proceed. Yeah. Michelle, you got the last word. Uh, thank you. I would say that, uh, you know, take inspiration from the big players out there. Definitely. If they are doing it, there is some rhyme and reason to why they are actually going after these problems. So yes, the industry is evolving. The, the, the problem spaces are evolving. Uh, so first of all, look at them. Don't, don't be afraid to, you know, uh, you know, use, for example, off the shelf solutions like HyperTrack, or if you feel you are at a massive scale, don't be afraid to go after problems like, you know, building pricing, et cetera, right? So, so, you know, build versus buy if you want to, but absolutely that's where the industry is going and you should be, you know, sort of focused on finding those gems as the industry is evolving. How do you actually find those problems? So. Thank you all very much, Tom and Aaron and Vishal for your excellent insight and uh, edited down very well. Thank you very much. Cash up, it's all yours. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, I think we've got some questions for the panel that we have some time to take uh, take on, Gaurav. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have a question from Feedloop uh, attendees. With the shift to flex workers, have companies within logistics research, uh, have the companies in logistics research, tech staffing solutions, you know, and we have about uh, 40 plus tech staffing companies here online, uh, like Instawork, like uh, Wanalo, uh, like work while, like Traba, uh, like uh, like uh, job uh, job box. So, have you looked at them? That's the first question. And the second question is, what are the challenges in using um, the flex work 
hiring flex workers, either working with the flex work companies or otherwise. Tom, do you want to do you want to maybe take that and then? Yes, flex working. It, it's tough. It, it, it's tough. You know, I, I I demand a muscle memory to to, to assemble one of my my treadmills. Um, you know, I, I've I've sourced several companies that that have like an open broker market. Uh, to where, you know, you throw out a load and then someone bids on the load and, you know, you can really reduce prices in that, in that type model, which, you know, C-suite's going to love. However, you don't have the consistency that you would have if you have Bob and Tim every day delivering and assembling three treadmills. So fr from a, um, from a flex worker uh, place, it is something that we utilize, but again, it, it's something that we try not to, we try to develop the talent try to develop the the uh, consistency uh, time and time and time again. Yeah, and I can quickly add to that. Uh, I, I can speak for SHIP that we are, uh, we completely, we, we haven't built this technology. We are still buying. So, you know, we are leveraging third-party uh, partners, third-party providers to help us onboard, to help us train, to help us, uh, you know, uh, build our supply pool. Uh, to help with once the once we 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 do our own customer acquisition, but then once the customers are acquired, actually getting them through the onboarding funnel, essentially, right? Getting them into the system, getting their background verifications done, etc. For that, we absolutely rely on third party third party companies, third party solutions. Uh, and I I would bet that a lot of companies are basically, you know, even even the Ubers and the Lyfts, for example, depending on use cases, right? They are uh, depending on the business line. If they are looking into a going into a new business area, they are doing build versus buy as well. So, wonderful. I'm going to give you one last question. We have another minute. Uh, question is: What keeps you up at night with respect to your logistics operations, and how are you planning uh, the logistic tech to help? And with that, I'm going to jump off and let you guys answer that, and let Kashyap wrap up after I'm done. So, so hu humorously, it's all the customers that have found my uh, cell phone number texting me about where their order is. Uh, so so that, that's what keeps me up at night. Uh, but again, it, it goes to the uh, visibility that, I, that I'm really looking forward for, for logistics tech to, to really create. You know, there are several really valuable tools out there, but one yet that I have to see that, that kind of checks every box. So that, that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing. And what, I, what would get me to sleep at night is knowing that all my customers know where their product is every given point in the day. Coming, coming from the engineering side of the question, I would say that what would keep me up at night is the same, like, same concept from the other side where I really need to understand how tech is interacting with humans. Because back in the day, humans were the primary source of this interaction with your customer. Now we have tech in the middle of it. So there's this sensitive balance where you need to have tooling to save the day in lots of situations because it's not a mature landscape and people are involved so things can happen so i think that's what keeps me up at night do i have the tooling to save like a massive problem that comes in my way in tech of the logistics yeah yeah and finally i'll add i'll end with the the product perspective uh it's always interesting to see where the puck is going where the competitors, where the different uh, major players in the company are pushing customer expectations. And then what do our customers need? What do they want? And are we building the right solutions for the customers for the for these different use cases? So, you know, we sort of the, the three sides, if you will, uh, all of us kind of focus on the same on the same core problem, but we look at it from different sides. That's what keeps me up at night. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, uh, Vishal. And thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to jump off now. We're going to end this call and on to the FlexWork case study with Jobbox. Uh, if you want to learn the recipe of how they're growing so fast, be sure to join us for the next session. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and see thank you, you thank at you. the Jobbox case study. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.